Leiden Schaflitsch, Department of the Army. That is a lie. <laughs> He's barely getting by. Post office margins are slim. So, we're still in jeopardy then. That would be a crazy twist. Well, Evergard's already on this mission. Is there anything a good letter can't solve? This is really high stakes then, putting a lot of trust in her. I'll go anywhere that you request. That is the most comfortable bed I've ever seen. Political marriage. Oh, but she's not feeling it. Maybe it's because she's nine. She looks like she's nine years old. Well, this will be a breeze after that whole opera OVA. Oh no, everyone says that. <laughs> People are so mean to Violet. Why do they always say that out loud? What? For real? I thought she was like 25. Does that 14 years mean 14 years out of the box? How old was she when she was shredding people up on the battlefield then? 10? Are those robot years? Oh, is this where we're gonna go? Right. It's definitely not a barrier to arranged political marriages. Well, I mean, that I think is a different issue. Oh, I have so much to say about this, but I feel like I should save it until I see a little bit more and maybe put it at the end because it's going to be super long. I mean, she's 14, what the hell does she know? <laughs> the age thing just changes so much. But it's anime, Alex, it's anime. In real life age, she's 30. This feels like someone under a lot of pressure. It's taken out a constant feeling of being berated by berating others. Also, that was adorable and terrifying. She got a lot better at this since the opera incident. She got a lot of inspiration. Oh, it made it! It passed revisions. Props to them for actually reading it first for once. But this is a bit of a crime though, no? I mean, she didn't... She might not want this. This is all moving so quickly. All of a sudden, Violet has friends in high places. Maybe they'll actually fall in love with this process of fake doll letter writing. And they're probably both doing it, right? It's all done by committee. Have they met in person? What I will say first though, because it's shorter, is not the age difference topic, but the arranged marriages topic. And I have a, a controversial opinion on this, I think. Like as the case with just about everything, it, it depends. It'll depend on the specific situation. I've been thinking about this so much recently when it comes to love and, and romance. There's a bunch of stuff that's important at the same time. A big part of it, and I would argue, the aspect that's talked about the most to the point of excluding all other aspects is the idea that in order for a relationship to be a good one or to be a functional one, it has to be something that fits what you want and makes you happy and is sort of framed in the perspective of an individual's needs. That is super important and that is ideal. And can't be dispensed with. But I think that that also can't be the only thing and it's prioritized a little bit too much at the expense of other really important things. The issue with making it all about what's good for you and what you want is you're going to change and also your emotions are going to fluctuate and there are going to be bad periods in a relationship and the way we're typically wired without a lot of hard work and really difficult abstract thinking we can almost always convince ourselves that we are right and that what we want is justified and can therefore navigate our way into doing all sorts of things that are immediately satisfying or fun or or pleasurable feel good that when followed all the way to their their logical conclusion allow for a degradation and a slip in upkeeping the relationship and compromising. There has to be something else that is like,
like a code of honor that is not of your choosing so that when you run into those crises, you have something else there to maintain something that is probably good for you, assuming it's, it's a relationship that has value. I think this is partly behind the phenomenon when there's a issue or a bump in, in relationships, everybody swoops in and is like, break up. As if the summary of the whole thing can be boiled down to the thought that if it's not suiting your individual needs and whims at this very moment, it's valueless. The older I get and the more I experience, the more I think that finding the right person is not only about finding someone who suits you and makes you feel good and hit certain buttons, but is someone who you decide is that person. I say all that to say, I said this is going to be short, but here we are. Arranged marriages are no better or worse than modern, modern relationships intrinsically. It's just the other side of the spectrum. Whereas I think uh, traditional Western views of romance is totally about the individual or, or you know, 95% about the individual. Arranged marriages are the same thing, but on the other side. And so I don't think either of those is correct by default. I don't think either of them has a monopoly on a good relationship. I actually know plenty of people who have really great deeply loving, deeply committed, faithful marriages that started as something arranged by their families. There are, of course, and thankfully, really great relationships that were not arranged. And there are going to be really terrible arranged marriages where people are just absolutely miserable. I think that suggests that it's not the format of how the relationship came to be, but rather the people and their relationship. And whether or not they can find that balance between what is good for them and what is not about them or answers to a higher calling than them. And not to sugarcoat it either. I think there's a danger to relying too strongly on a code of conduct and honor because then you start sacrificing yourself. You can end up following that too far, ending up under the bus, under the wheels of somebody who actually has no regard for you at all and will, will easily dispense with you. And you're kind of stuck in the, the trap of, you know, your commitment, et cetera. So it's very tricky and I'm not willing to dispense with anything categorically. It'll all come down to the individuals. She discarded her tiara in disgust. I, mean, I don't blame her. If, had, if I had a bed like this, I'd never leave it either. Is she even there? Everyone always loves to hear that. If you want to get someone on, on your good side, tell them they're being emotional. I think she could have worded that differently, but underneath there is something sweet. <laughs> this seems, yeah, it's like she plays the mother role. This is not master worker. It's more like mother daughter. Oh, sweet. I don't blame her. It's a lot to take in. It's so much pressure and responsibility. Like your marriage is responsible for the safety of, a, of two nations and avoiding war when you're 14. I don't know if that's right. I don't know if that's the right answer. I don't think that's the right approach. You don't want to like detach from it. I can't tell. Is it detachment? Or is it like healthy acceptance? So they have mad. Maybe you could send Violet to Damien to do the auto memory doll service for him. That might make it a little more real, believable. Keep your expectations low. <laughs> She's a good listener, though. It's quite young. That's really tough. As someone in a position of royalty, she's going to be objectified to a large degree. She's always going to be a symbol of something. This makes two birthday parties in what, six episodes, five episodes, where the birthday girl cried. Who was it? Was it him? Oh, wow. Oh, okay. I give yourself credit, I mean, get a lot on your plate. Oh, this is sort of transformed into something totally different. This is just like normal major change anxiety. Doesn't seem like there's anything really sinister happening. It's a really complex and sensitive topic, which makes it sort of difficult to talk about. I actually have a little bit of a funny aside about this. When I was doing the Fruits Basket reactions, anyone who has seen Fruits Basket will know there's a large age gap relationship that exists in that show as well. And I remember when I first reacted to that episode, there were a lot of comments that were highly critical of that and were saying that it's sort of universally objectively a terrible thing. And it was sort of disconcerting for me because at that time, and still to this day, I was and am dating someone who is more than 10 years younger than me. So I was reading these comments thinking, I wonder if people would hate me if they knew this. And I will even say from my experience that it does sort of create a, a unique set of challenges. But I would say in my particular case, there are a lot bigger obstacles than that. And those are cultural barriers and 
language barriers. I, I would put those as more difficult for me than age barriers. People say age is just a number. And, you know, the risk here is I don't want to say that it's it's meaningless. It's not. But there's some truth in there, which is that like many things, there's a difference between an external indicator and the actual heart of the matter. And in this case, the heart of the matter and what's going to be important are the people involved and how they're doing and whether or not they're healthy and taken care of and safe. Because it's such a tricky topic, I want to make it very clear of something I don't think, that age laws are not important. At the same time, there are certain elements of that argument that I think are worth examining under more scrutiny. And one of them is an idea that's not just limited to this discussion, but a lot of discussions, which is, like I just said, mistaking the source for the signal. And when you think about laws or more generally customs or standard sets of established practices, the goal shouldn't be attachment to those things, but to what the objective is. And the objective is what is best for those involved. I think what is often missed in the discussion about laws is that laws aren't really designed for the benefit of people necessarily, or that's not the fundamental operating principle. In a lot of cases, the reason for laws is to prevent a, a kind of game over event. It's aimed at mitigating massive damage if certain practices are widely applied. It doesn't mean that it is good for everyone. Those are very different things. Laws sort of by definition or default are going to be aimed at a mass group of people. And in that dynamic, the individual circumstances and specifics of people's lives cannot possibly be accounted for because there's just too many. So since you can't do that, what you aim at when you're making laws is to think about what would be a disaster if widely applied and then stop that from happening broadly so that, yes, there are some things that are missed as a result of that. There are missed opportunities and some benefit that might have happened can't happen. But if done right, that's worth it to prevent a, a massive amount of harm or actual danger or atrocities that would ripple out into the society as a whole. So overall, I think these kinds of safeguards and these kinds of social conventions are a good thing because they probably prevent a lot of terrible things from happening. They sort of push relationships out to a point where we can be a little bit more sure that people are at least mature enough, although who really knows, to make decisions that will be beneficial to them. Even though, again, you can never guarantee that at any age. That's not the same thing as saying that there can be no good relationships between people of different ages and that it's inconceivable that in certain cultures under the right circumstances, functional, healthy relationships could occur with people under the age of, say, 18 or whatever the, the case may be. I mean, this is part of the reason why there are different age laws in different countries, right? I think maybe a, a more objective demarcator of whether or not something is appropriate is not the number, but physical maturity. I would also argue that emotional maturity is very important too. It's just that emotional maturity is a lot less quantifiable than physical maturity. The broader concept here for me is to not get attached to a broader set of principles that was not meant to fit the individual and think that within a law, within a set of, of customary guidelines, that is the only objective truth about what is good. There's got to be some kind of interplay between the two. And in order to find that, you're going to have to point the lens at both the big you know, the societal, the cultural, and the small, which is the individual, not one or the other, in what I think is becoming an emerging theme of this whole video and my life. So it's tough for me to like unilaterally be critical of this, especially if the character wants it, seems to be of like reasonably sound mind and intent, came up with the idea herself, is in a specific culture and time where this is something that is seen as appropriate and where the real danger seems to fall down to what kind of relationship she'll have and who the guy is, which is also true of literally every relationship. <laughs> This looks like a mission for Violet Evergarden. Memory Dell Extraordinaire. <laughs> Again, I was so blown away by the OVI. I feel like even this is kind of light work compared to that opera piece that won the hearts of the whole nation. Breaking the law. Speaking of breaking the rules. Violet Evergarden going rogue. <laughs> I like it. Is this growth? Oh no, is she writing to a colleague? Is she communicating back and forth with someone she knows? Who's writing his letters? There's a way to do this without crossing any lines. You just ask her to commission you. That's so funny. They end up talking to each other more directly, just still through dolls. These are public? That's sort of, sort of embarrassing. 
This is just so much more deeply personal, though. Wow. I'm confused. Are these going public? Because that would be so amazing if they are. So amazing, the, the, the realness. Not just expressing themselves to each other, but to their subjects. <laughs> Everyone's getting involved. They wanted a love story that united the nation, right? That made women cry and men's hearts beat. Here it is, folks. Write an opera about it. The stakes of it just add to the romance. <laughs> they seem like a great fit. Just, I mean, my reading of them so far, she's someone who wants to be taken care of, and he's someone who wants to do caretaking. So, it feels like a great dynamic. While I'm sinking my whole ship with my opinions, I'll say this too. I think the importance of roles is underrated in relationships. Not saying that this is correct or the only way, but I really like feeling like I'm taking care of people when it comes to romantic relationships. And so what fits me really well is somebody who likes that attention. If there was any weirdness or insecurity about that, it would create a whole host of problems that would blow the whole thing up. I also think there's sort of a mistake, mistaken belief that being in a certain area of that role means you're weak. There's nothing weak about relying on someone. In fact, I think it takes a lot of courage to open yourself up at all. I think it depends on who you really are and what you really want without without pretense or expectation about what others expect from you. Ooh, very Socratic. Socrates, the smartest man because the only one to say he knew nothing. <laughs> Sounds like a date. Oh, she just laid down a challenge. Wouldn't it be fun if this happened in real life? Kawaii so. <laughs> just having a kawaii so moment. But everyone else can see that this is great. You had me at I will go hunting with you. He was moved to action. Picked a great setting. That's <laughs> so funny. I was being so critical of like romance stories in the OVA, thinking like it's difficult to do effectively, but man, I'm hooked on this one. Oh no, is this goodbye? To my surrogate mother. And she was able to get out of bed this morning. That's how you know life's going well. That was probably the most significant mission, or one of the most significant missions any doll has ever done. Too bad she couldn't stick around for the wedding. Oh, maybe she will. Maybe this is a fake out. Of course not. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a big, it's a big move. Big change. They're not losing each other, though. They're just going to be living apart. Speaking of courage. It's tough for Alberta, too. Just putting a lot of faith in her and the future. Very unselfish. Oh! Well, she didn't make the wedding. This is the first after credit scene I remember. Oh, it was her. I get it. Oh, did you get to go after all? Why am I so invested in that? <laughs> it was more. Oh no, is this going to be a cliffhanger? Oh yeah, I almost forgot about this lurking evil. The general's or Major's brother. What's your problem, dude? Why? Oh, she did do something bad. Is this what's burning? Is this the burning? Are we burning? I'm so lost, didn't he? Didn't he give his brother her in a box? I, I think I have the chronology confused. This guy looks like he needs to write a letter. He he's got a lot of letters brewing beneath that sultry exterior. Speaking of fruits basket, something about the show makes me think that nobody will get unfair treatment. He's got a plum too, you know what I'm saying? And that could be a, a mission. That could be a task to bring out in a letter. Though he's going to be a tough nut to crack, if so, given the fact that he seems to have celebrated even his father's death. But yeah, cliffhanger aside, that episode was fantastic. I would say maybe my favorite so far. I can just imagine that there are elements in this episode that are controversial. Having seen it, it doesn't really bother me at all. I actually found their relationship really 
really compelling and believable. And the dangers of it, the pitfalls of it, they seem to fall down to things that are just pitfalls in general, no matter what the, the situation. She's vulnerable, you know? She's taking a huge risk, putting her life in his hands, trusting that she has enough information to judge his character and thinking that he's honorable. He has a, a lot of responsibility honoring that, not abusing that trust. If he is the man that he seems to be, that will actually be a point of purpose in his life. Whatever gaps exist between them can become something of great beauty. It can be a rise to a challenge of being great, you know, being someone who's really good to her. Reading into it a little bit, if he is as conscientious as he seems, he's going to be worried about being able to live up to that. He prob probably recognizes how great of a call to honor it, it will be for him and greatly desires to match that despite being an imperfect human being. And I think if he's able to do that and she's able to meet him with openness and with this level of emotional maturity that she showed this episode, there's a glue there that I think is sort of hard to replicate. They've kind of been through it. They both earned it. Overall, I feel a really unique, romantically beautiful in a rare way, heartfelt episode. Really <laughs> kind of blew me away. <laughs>